That should work. Don't panic. I just got one too. A little man should be here. What's up, guys? How you doing today? Is that my twan joke? Huh. Hey, man. Come here and say hi to me before I get started on this. I just started the live stream. Come here. Excuse the moon. What? Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Say, say hola. Hola. There's people on there. They're on there right now. Believe it or not, they're there. Oh. <laughs> Who's that jelly? You go tell them. You go check them dogs. Oh, I know. Big trucks. Papa's got to work. Oh, I'll come out and hang out in a little bit, buddy. Here's your blankie. Okay. Get your buggy. <laughs> All right, you guys. This one? No, he likes that one. He wants the red. This one? No. This one? No? This one? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's a dead bowl. Alright. Alright. Taking this one today. I'll see you in a little bit. Alright. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing today? Sorry, that was like the worst timing to start the live stream ever. Anyways, <laughs> family's obviously here doing good. Everyone's doing good. Um, Yeah, and I wanted to pop in and do a video for you guys today. Uh, this video is actually. I was going to record this and edit it and do all that and I still might actually do a more informative version of this um, because these live streams always get a little bit sidetracked and stuff as you can see the way it just started. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about selecting motors today. It's uh, something needs to be talked about. It's uh, something I haven't talked about for a while and we're, we're not going to talk about any specific motor. I'm not promoting any specific motors or anything like that today. It's um. We're literally going to talk about how I go about selecting motors for my builds, different builds, mainly RC crawler scale truck type builds, right? Um, this same rule of thumb or, or thought process can be, you know, this can be attributed to like really any RC build for the most part. And um, yeah, yeah, it it's basically boils down to this little simple formula that I use. And uh, that is this. When I go to create a build, like uh, one of these here that you see, right? These are um, three of my builds that I'm really messing with a lot right now. This is the newest one. This is, uh, I haven't named it yet actually, but this is the newest one. This is a RC four wheel drive trail finder two. This is a custom SCX 10 two, right? And this is a SCX 10 one but with 10-2 axles under it now. So it's basically a 10-2 as well. And um, these builds are all great examples because they all run completely different even though they're all set up. Well, I guess these two are set up similar, but there's differences between each one, right? And if you guys watch a lot of my videos, then you probably will have seen how they perform or how they drive, right? Uh, the majority of my stuff is geared really low. I like slow moving, very controlled vehicles um, for this type of uh, build anyways. Um, I still build fast stuff too, so this can be applied to those things too for the most part. But the goal of today's video is to help a lot of you guys stop um, overheating motors, blowing motors, um, wasting money buying motors that may not work for your application, right? So in the past, um, I've done a lot of videos where I do some crazy stuff, like I put uh, 12 turn motors in things and try to rock crawl with them and stuff. They're not meant for that. Like right now I've got uh, my deadbolt has a 12 turn uh, brushed motor in it and it's light enough I can get away with rock crawling with it even though that motor specifically with stock gearing shouldn't really be used for rock crawling, right? If you're going to use it for rock crawling, you're going to want to make some adjustments. So those are the things we're going to basically talk about. Um, Whatever your build is, right, the main things to know 
are how much does it weigh? Uh, how fast are you gonna want it to go, right? And little things that don't matter that much um, in the rock crawling world, but it does a little bit more in the speed world uh, is wheel diameter or circumference or whatever, right? Outside diameter. Um, and also the weight of the rotating mass, things like that. Um, you are going to strain your components. You're gonna strain your motor, you're gonna strain your electronics. Um, as you put resistance against those motors, what's gonna happen is you're gonna build up heat all right, inside the motor and inside the ESC, right? Because of that electrical draw, that, that charge is facing resistance, right? And so heat builds up and you can add a fan to it, but even with a really good fan, you're gonna have internal heat. That heat has to go somewhere. While it may dissipate, by the time it dissipates, that internal point, that core point, um, the source of heat is gonna be so hot that you could do some damage, right? And it's very important to realize that. And if you're not 100% certain about the temperature that your ESC and your motor are running, then you should probably get a heat gun, do some test runs, uh, put a little strain on your setup and test it. And uh, keep an eye on the temperature throughout the process so that you can see where you're ending at ending up at under normal conditions uh, under maybe some uh, more extenuous conditions and maybe under lighter conditions right then you have kind of a ballpark range of what you need to do with your system based on the temperatures you're seeing so for me personally um, I don't really look at a lot of temperatures anymore I used to but I don't anymore and that's just because I've got my own formula down for what I like all right I like really low gearing I like a little bit higher voltage not really high voltage but a little bit higher voltage, 3S or 4S is my preferred voltage range, right? 2S still works, but the reason I don't like to run 2S is because I'm going to want to run 3S powered components such as light bars or winches or uh, certain servos, right? I'm gonna wanna see 12 volts plus in certain things. So um, instead of running separate batteries for separate things, I like to run one singular battery that powers everything and then wire it accordingly. So what I wind up doing is pushing most of my trucks in the 3S to 4S range. I don't really ever go past that. Uh, I don't see a need for it with what I do. Most of my trucks, most of my builds range in weight from I mean, they're all over the map, but the average is probably between eight and 13 pounds with some exceeding 15, 16 pounds, uh, maybe more. I don't know, I haven't really weighed them in a long time. And some maybe less around the six, seven pound range. But the majority of them I'm guessing are around the 10 to 13 pound range, honestly. And uh, with that much heat, doing slow crawling, um, especially for videos or uh, with you know, trying to get that really scale movement going on and scale speed. Um, I don't like to always slow my videos down, so a lot of times I like to be able to drive the speed that I want to see it move at. And that may build up some heat, right? Especially if you've got a big rock or something and you've got a tire, you're trying to work up over that rock, right? It's a lot of resistance on the motor, especially if you're moving slow. If you're moving fast, you get momentum on your side and it kind of helps things out, but it doesn't look realistic and that's not how I like to drive. So. Um, in order to combat that, what I do is I gear down. Very few of my trucks run a stock gearing setup. The only one of these three that does is the Trail Finder 2, and that will probably change, right? Because I just got it and I just started building it. It's got new electronics in it now, which we'll go over in probably a future episode of Holmes Hobbies Motor Control. But for now, it's stock gearing, and I need to um, I need to keep that in mind when I go to drive it. You don't want to wear out the stock components if you can't afford to buy new components and if you just bought new components you don't want to abuse them and shorten the lifespan on those components thus wasting your money so that's why i wanted to make this video is because it's very important when you are new to this or even if you're not new to this and you've built a few of these or whatever you just may not you know encounter certain things until you encounter certain things such as burning up motors and stuff due to weight a lot of people will put it on the brand or put it on the um, turn of the motor or put it on the ESC or um, what there's a lot of things people blame it on but in reality it's how we set these builds up right um, these electronics whether it be a you know BLE Pro meant to handle some abuse in a, a, a Puller Pro you know or a 
Evolver, take <laughs> revolver, an evolver, a revolver. I was wanting to say devolver, a revolver that can handle a lot of weight, things like that, versus something like a Trailmaster Sport that's you know maybe meant for a little bit more of a lighter rig, so, you know, trail bashing, lightweight things. Um, there's reasons why those exist the way they do, but it's up to us to select accordingly and then tune our rigs accordingly to make the most out of each component. So, if your budget say allows for, I don't know something like mine, like a 15 to $20 brushed motor, and you want to have that motor last for a good, whatever, three to six months, and you wanna get the most out, you wanna use it a lot, um, then you wanna take care to um, tune appropriately, right? You want the brushes to last a long time. Doesn't matter what they're made out of, brushes only can last so long, and that it's gonna be determined by how we treat them, right? So make sure that if you're running a heavy rig like I do, that you're gearing it as low as physically possible, right? And if you want that wheel speed back, um, I don't know what to tell you. You're just gonna have to let some of it go. You're never gonna get it all back. You're gonna have to let some of it go. And if you uh, want it to last, you know, you gotta sacrifice somewhere. I don't know, you can't have everything, right? You, you gotta find a balance. Do you want a lot of torque? Do you want a lot of wheel speed? Do you want a lot of longevity? Do you want a lot of performance? You've got to find the balance between these things, right? And a lot of folks forget that when they go to build an RC. So this is something I was thinking about, something John was talking to me about. Um, I have had some of you guys watch my previous videos and think that it's okay to do what I was doing and that you would, for some reason, get longevity out of the motor that way. Um, not all of my videos are meant to show you guys how to get the most out of these motors. Some of them are just meant for me to have fun. So a lot of times, because I am uh, I am in a position where I have a lot of these trucks, sometimes I'll just take one out and just want to see what happens when I do a certain thing. And it's okay because I've got another one I can grab to play with in the meantime until I can fix that one. Some of you guys may only have one of these at a time, two of these at a time, and that's okay. I only did forever. And I want you guys to get the most out of them. I don't want you to get one and then have a fun experience one time, it breaks, and then you're bummed out and you don't use it for a month or two months or however long. I want you to be able to use it for days on end. So um, experience is everything. Getting a good experience is more important than uh, obviously getting a bad experience. So. If you want to have a good experience with your motors, whether you're spending 150 bucks or you're spending 15 bucks, um, just take the time to to gear according to your weight, right? It's the biggest thing I can say, gear according to your weight. Second, do maintenance on your motors, right? Um, you guys don't see me doing a lot of maintenance on my motors, but I do do maintenance on my motors. Keep them clean, right? Some of them I don't do maintenance on. I'm not gonna lie, like the yellow Jeep has never had maintenance. <laughs> Neither is my trail honcho. But some of them, uh, or the majority of them, I do do a lot of maintenance on. So it's very important to follow through after you spend your money, you, you invest in this product, whatever it may be, however expensive it may be, cheap or expensive, either end, in the middle, does not matter. Invest the time into just taking care of it, just like you would a real car, right? Um, the more you do that, the more you're going to be happy with yourself later on for doing it. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break, read some of these comments. You guys, I'm sorry I, I've kind of been ignoring you here. I just want to get that out for people that watch this video after the fact and uh, miss the live stream. So, um, And while I'm reading some of these, you guys, let me know what you're working on right now. What kind of truck you got in front of you? You working on something? You got to you gotta build your uh, trying to finish up? You starting something new? You got to... A uh, new project you just unboxed? Let me know, man. All right. Shout out to, uh, who was the first person in here today to comment? Channa, Channa Poling, you still around, bro? All right, man. Shout out to you. SD Crawler, what's up? Been a minute for sure, man, but I'm back. I don't know if you guys have been following my Instagram, uh, my Facebook stuff, but I'm dropping heat left and right. I'm putting a lot of my YouTube videos are now going to be up on Instagram, too, on IGTV, so that you guys... If you don't remember to, you know, whatever, come here to YouTube, you can also watch them over there, too. At least you'll be able to. Uh, Alex, what's up? Alex Dora, Swampers RC, what's up? Hey, Jeff, what's up? Jeffrey Hamilton, my dog, man. I hope you're doing good, bro. I'm doing all right. Power Nation, what's up, man? Uh, let's see. Nice family, friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Homes all the way, that's what I'm talking about. RC Australia Adventures, what's up, man? Um... Boom, RC Propaganda, how you doing, man? Nuno Diaz, ah, Portugal in the building, glad to have you back. 
Ah, how is everyone tonight? Charlie, how are you doing, man? I hope you're doing good. I hope everyone's in good health, feeling good. I've got a lot of amazing things going on, which we will talk about um, at the very end of this episode. So maybe if you guys can remind me in the chat once we get you know around the 30-minute marker, towards the end, whenever we're closing down here, remind me to update you guys on what I have going on. I've got a lot of stuff going on. I would like you to, uh, if you're above the age of 18, to definitely um, check out the other stuff i got going on too. So let me read a couple more of these, and then we'll get back to talking about RCs. Uh, I love seeing you guys talking and chat to each other. That's the coolest thing, man. It's like our own community right here, that ESP community. Ah, it's awesome. Brandon B., what's up? Working on trailers, good video to walk into. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Always nice, uh, always nice to know you guys are watching this stuff while you're wrenching on your things. You know, that's, that's one of my favorite things. I love being... I love being an asset to the community. That's that to me is important. Mike, what's up, man? Shout out to Colorado. JJ's Customs LLC in the building, my brother. What's good with you? Shout out to Cali. Shout out to JJ. Man, you guys, if you don't know me and uh, JJ's have been working on a collaboration here. JJ Customs is a. Uh, Amazing hobby shop. Definitely check them out on Instagram. They just broke 2,000 followers. Uh, they're climbing, man. They're climbing. It's awesome. It's a cool thing to see businesses in the community grow. Um, this is a build we are working on together. I will be updating you guys on this here soon. We'll be doing a video about this, doing some driving. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff, dude. Talking about the tuning, how I set my stuff up. Um, there are definitely some differences in this already. And it's a runner. It is a runner. I can turn it on right now, and a lot of stuff works on it. It's pretty cool. Um, but I'm hoping to turn this into something special, man. I really want to turn this into something special. You guys convinced me not to do the lowrider just yet. I am going to do a lowrider. Don't get it twisted. I still have a bunch of stuff to do to start piecing a lowrider together. I have I have an idea. We're still doing a lowrider. Don't think I'm not doing that. I just, uh, man, I just really, you know, for the first one of these, I really wanted to do something off-road based. I don't know. I just, I like it. I like it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Uh, I'm going to set this down real quick. Do any of you guys have an RC four-wheel drive Trailfinder 2 Blazer? Um, what do you think about them? Do you like them? Uh, do you not like them? What are some things you wish were different about them? I'd like to know myself. Uh, RX-7 update, please. James, coming soon. Coming very soon. Uh, if you guys follow my Instagram, you can see I put up, put up a, a, a couple of RX-7 videos lately. Just uh, some teasers. <laughs> I have a big, big video coming up about the RX-7 where we are going to tell the story of me and my love for rotaries and uh, my RX-7s. Yeah, we're going to talk about the whole thing and I have footage that will probably be kind of a trip to watch. <laughs> but yes, uh, it'll be awesome. Yes, much love. Much love, JJ. All right. Uh, Bailey, what's up? Trying to get an SMT 10 based mega mud truck back running. Um, you want to play it in the snow? That's what I'm talking about, man. I still have mine, too. It's going to come out for this snow, too. Believe that, man. Believe that. Where can I find a scale ZJ? Man, you tell me, bro. I have a scale ZJ body, and honestly, I'm not, I don't like it. I, it's no hate against the guy that built it for me. He's a great guy. I just, I personally don't like it. It's got the, as somebody that drives ZJs, has drove ZJs for like the last 15 years, um, 10 years, 15 years, I, uh, I'm very familiar with them. And so the shapes just aren't 100% correct. So I want one that is 100% correct with a full interior. So if anyone out there is willing to work with me on building a ZJ body, like uh, someone out there that's badass at 3D printing or something, feel free to reach out. I mean, um, I'm going to eventually get something figured out, but always, always keep that in mind. Uh, if anyone out there knows how to do something I'm really looking to do, right? And I don't know who you are and I don't know you can do that. Feel free to let me know that you do that. <laughs> Send me some pictures or something. Cause, uh, yeah, <laughs> that is something I definitely want to do. I'm not going to be building RCs like I used to. I used to get a new RC every month pretty much. And, um, I'm not going to be doing that anymore. I'm going to be building like one, maybe two a year tops. And I'm um, really going to slow down on it and just enjoy them a lot more, right? And fine-tune them, try to finish them, you know, do the little things that wind up never getting done. 
Watching from Ontario, Canada. Would you get into RC drag racing since you're into 1-1 cars? I enjoy your videos. Absolutely, man. Um, I've actually done some RC drag racing just for fun, but never on a hardcore scale. I would definitely be down to do that at some point, especially if we had a good area to do it with some good concrete or something, you know? That would be awesome. Uh, I like I like all forms of RC, to be honest with you. There's not... I can't be like... There's nothing that I can think of that I'm really just like, oh, that's lame. Meh. I think it's all pretty fun, you know? But if I have my choice, um, it's probably going to be building scale stuff, whether it's off-road or on-road. Anything scale. Um, I really want to build a scale airplane for some reason. I just I really want to do that. A scale helicopter, a scale boat. Uh, I'd like to have a, a set of construction equipment someday, but it's so expensive, man. I don't know if that'll ever happen or not. That's a, that's a dream for a lot of us. Reality for few. Uh see all right what's up rich homan how you doing man welcome to welcome to the show here uh the blazer's beautiful thank you thank you i'm trying to get through some of these and we'll get back to talking about some rc here um let's see like button is smashed my man that's what i'm talking about i think js gale does a good zj i have not seen js gale do a zj if you have a link to that please uh put it in the chat leave it somewhere hit me up on instagram let me know because i follow a lot of js gale stuff and i've never seen him do a zj i've seen him do xj's i've seen him do uh fsj's i've seen him do mj's I've yet to see a zj but let me know i could be wrong i don't see everything <laughs> um anyways that being said uh, let's get back to talking about motor selection real quick. Just make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, yeah. Heat kills electronics. Uh, water kills electronics. You guys already know this. But um, when you do your builds, when you have a new RC, you can't just buy a motor and think that's going to be the um, end all to performance, right? Especially when it comes to just speed and or, you know, low speed control, things of that nature. There's a lot more variables that go into it. So, Definitely make sure that you gear low. And I know some of you guys really hate the thought of just going so slow and walking and not being able to root, 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 and zip it around and fling dirt and stuff. I know a lot of you guys like that, but if that's what you're into, you need to purchase a motor that is meant to do that. And even so, you need to gear it accordingly, right? Um, if your stuff is heavy and you're trying to zip it around like that, you're probably going to have some problems, right? But you guys see my Wraith, the Grape Ape. I've had that thing for God knows how long. So many years. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's got a lot of metal on it. Uh, a lot of wordy made parts. Um, big wheels and tires. Weights in the wheels and tires. And uh, guess what, man? I zip it around. I rock bounce it. I, it's fast. It goes. And um, it still crawls nice. And I've never once had an issue with the electronics in it. And it's all Holmes Hobbies products. Old Holmes Hobbies products. So uh, I'm telling you, like, it's all about how you set your stuff up. I have blown plenty of things. You guys, some of you guys are old enough, been around here long enough to remember my box of electronics. I still have it sitting over there full of blown electronics. I learned this the hard way, man. I, I learned it just like a lot of you guys are learning right now. The only difference was I am sponsored, man. I'm sponsored. I have been sponsored for a very long time by a lot of different companies which has afforded me the ability to learn the hard way, man. For you guys. I'm learning this for you guys, not just for me. The more stuff I've blown up, the more stuff I do blow up, the more things I learn to tell you not to do. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do this. Watch out for that over there. Oh, yeah. Guess what I found out? If you do this, magic smoke, right? So I've got a whole bunch of videos <laughs> about my mess up. So um it, i'm very very fortunate to have been in that position and uh can't thank john enough for allowing that to happen over the years um it's it's very important to know that this stuff costs a lot of money man it, and you got to pay to play and i don't want you guys to pay to play so much that you don't enjoy playing you know so uh, take your time set it up you know if you can't drive it for a while because you can't afford to buy the right gearing for a week or two or a month or whatever Trust me, it's worth it. Set it aside. Start doing some little things. Uh, painting, you know, uh, sanding, maybe building a custom thing out of some spare plastic laying around, building accessories. Like, there's a lot of stuff you can do without money to really, really modify these trucks and bring some life to them, bring some realism realism to them, right? And uh, 
You guys know that from my old videos, man. I wasn't always heavily sponsored, and I, you know, as the years go by, I get sponsored less and less. I kind of walk away from a lot of sponsorships, and I have less and less interest in doing things with new companies. I enjoy the companies I work with, and I don't, I don't enjoy all the, all the marketing aspect of it and the fictitious aspect of it. I don't like to just work all the time. I like to have fun and enjoy it, and I want to share my passion with you guys, and I don't want to just always promote to you guys. So um, it's very important for me to kind of remember that also for myself. <laughs> and so um, I took a break myself this year. I don't know if you guys noticed. I haven't been putting up a lot of videos until recently I started coming back to it, especially my patrons know what's going on. Um, I, uh, I had to take a break, man. I burnt out on all this stuff. It was just too much. Between building RCs every single freaking day and making videos every single freaking day and talking with businesses and sponsors every single freaking day, I was just over it, man. I couldn't take it anymore. Dealing with disgruntled fans and subscribers and stuff that were uh, just not happy. Dealing with businesses and, and stuff going under and bankruptcy. You, know, you guys know. I went through a lot of stuff, so I don't want to um, get back into it. But that was rough for a while. So I'm. it feels good to be back at it and to be passionate again. And I want to kind of remind you guys of that because that used to be what we do we used to do a lot of that you know it was just passion if you go watch my old videos it's just adventure after adventure um the shop stuff was just you know i was never the best at doing shop stuff but uh i try you know and i try to show you guys how i do things i just i'm not that organized or structured i'm a little chaotic but <laughs> um i try to show you guys you know but i want to get back to that and uh i have been lately and i want to share more and more of that with you so <coughs> that being said, I think we're about ready to wrap this up. Plus, I need a drink of water. My throat's dry. So, why don't you guys shout out where you're from? Shout out where you're representing. Shout out your hood. Shout out your, uh, shout out your sets. <laughs> shout out, shout out your gang, gang, gang. No, seriously though. Shout out who you guys are representing, man. Shout out where you're representing. Shout out your neighborhoods, man. Represent where you're from. Uh, we're going to be doing more and more of these. I told you last time we're going to do more. We are doing more. If you want to see more content, you don't want to wait around for it to hit YouTube. You can always follow me on Patreon. Um, some stuff you don't have to pay to see or whatever. I know everyone thinks Patreon's really expensive, but you don't have to. I've got a bunch of different tiers, and um, those are about to get adjusted again as far as like what I'm going to be offering everybody. But, uh, yeah, I've been slowly ramping up my content on there as well. So, Definitely jump on there if you want to see this stuff early. Most of my videos come out three days before they hit YouTube. So, yeah, yeah, there's perks to this stuff. That being said, uh, I'm representing Bend, Oregon, man. And shout out to my folks out in Hawaii and my family out in New Orleans and all of my Cali boys. Love you all. <coughs> man, all over the world. I love all you guys. Venezuela, everybody, man. I got people all over the world right now. And I feel so blessed to have you guys watching me. Supporting what we do, helping spread this RC love. And uh, um, you're going to notice something else. Something Before I start doing my little sign-off stuff here, you're going to notice something else that's going to be a little different. Um, there's going to be less and less uh, PG-13 type stuff over here. It's not that I'm going to get all crazy and we're going to be like cussing all the time and you know getting drunk on here or anything. Uh, it, but um, I'm a grown-ass man, dude. I'm 35 years old. Uh, and I don't... I'm tired... Of catering to the five people that watch this that are underage and the other 20 people that um, you know sit and watch their kids every day I love you guys and I love that you let your kids watch me but I want you to remember that I don't do this just for the kids I do this for the guys like me the grown-ass men out there that have been through hell and back that are still going through hell just so they can provide a little happiness for the whatever the people they love whether it's two, three, or 30 people, or whatever, man. I, I do this for people that are looking for for their little slice of uh, happiness, right? Grown folks, like myself. And um, I never, uh, never intended that. Before any of that, I do it for me, man. This is an outlet for myself. I've been through a lot, and I... Uh, I'm not a Nickelodeon show, man. I'm not that guy. I'm not the dude that sits around and is super PC for the kids all the time. I love the kids. I do a lot for the kids. I always will. I'm a father myself. Um, but um, this is this is partially an outlet for me. So it's mainly an outlet for me and folks like me. So, yeah, please remember that. As we go into the future, um, I am going to be promoting my other channel a little bit more. You will see a lot more of that. Um, 
I posted some on my Instagram today, right? And if that type of stuff offends you, then we probably would have never got along in the first place. So don't hesitate to kick rocks. I'm not going to be mad at you. We don't always have to agree on everything. But uh, yeah, it's 2019. We're going in 2020, and I don't play by 1976 rules. So um, it's time to move up. It's time to adapt. It's time to evolve, and that's what I've been doing. And it feels good. It feels uh, refreshing to do so. Um, I live a very... Uh, yeah, I don't want to say unique. I live a certain lifestyle, and I enjoy that lifestyle, and I work hard for that lifestyle, and uh, I'm going to promote that lifestyle. I'm going to talk about that lifestyle. I'm going to share that with other folks out there that may be like me that are looking for some inspiration or some motivation and looking for a way to uh, maybe do something they want to do, right, and uh, a kick in the pants so they can get up and create their own path, right? So uh, that's there's going to be some more of that, right? Not just RC. Um it's mainly going to be RC. It will eventually be all RC, but until I can get the word out that my other channel is now popping again too, um, you will see a little bit of cross promotion. So that being said, uh, I love you guys very much. Tell me where you're from, man. Let's represent. I, I'm going to go ahead and try to catch up on these. No lie, Skill Wars got me started. Oh yeah, Brandon B. Oh, that's another thing too. Skill Wars is coming back, um, but it's going to be for patrons. I'm just going to let you guys know. I know some of you guys are going to be mad. Be like, what? It's not coming out public. Um, it may eventually, right? But it's going to be for patrons and it's not available just yet, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be for patrons first. And, uh, after some amount of time, those episodes will start hitting the public, right? But, uh, it's not available for patrons just yet either. I got a lot of work to do, but we're going to start. We're going to start doing entries again here soon. So the website will be back up here, uh, hopefully with the next week or two, and you guys will be able to start submitting your builds again. And, um, yeah, Skill Wars is coming back, man. And you, uh, yeah, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar and as much as you want to. I got some guys that pop on over there and really throw down to support what we're doing. So you can thank them for Skull Wars coming back. Because uh, if it wasn't for Patreon, Skull Wars would not be coming back. And that's just all there is to it. Um, that is a $1,500 a month show. That's what I'm used to making for putting in that amount of work. And even doing that, uh, it was not worth my time. Not even remotely worth my time. It is a shit ton of work. And... Uh, I need to make it make sense somehow. And the only way I can see doing that without having to get a business to pay for it is through Patreon. So Patreon is going to be the outlet for Scale Wars. So if you guys want to support that, feel free to sign up on Patreon. Have patience, right? Because you will see some changes over the next week or two. The look of it might change a little bit. The structure might change a little bit. But um, that is because I'm trying to adjust for Scale Wars and 2020 season of what's to come. Yeah, so, woo! That's it, man. That's it. That's really that's really all I gotta say. And there is another episode of Homes Hobbies Motor Control dropping tomorrow morning, actually public. It's been out on Patreon for a couple days already, but it'll drop tomorrow for the public. So, um, I hope you guys like mud because it involves a lot of mud. <laughs> and then there will be another uh, Homes Hobbies episode dropping on Patreon in the next, uh, probably in the next. 24 to 48 hours so there's a lot of activity brewing you guys uh, a lot of things going on and there's a new video dropping on ganja josh my other channel um hopefully tomorrow maybe we'll see so um busy man over here you guys so if you want to support the busyness and you want to see uh 2020 be the freaking craziest year we've ever had with esp and, and content release Patreon is the way to do it. I know for a long time I've been like, oh, I'm not going to push my Patreon. I'm going to push the hell out of Patreon, you guys, because I want to I want to do this. I want to make videos for you guys. And the only reason I stopped is because I got burnt out and I wasn't making any money. And when you're doing something, you're not making any money and you're getting burnt out. Yeah, you just can't do it. You kill yourself, man. It is ridiculous. That is how you kill yourself. And I ain't trying to kill myself. So thank you to my patrons. Shout out to all my patrons. I want to give a special shout out to Brennan Savage. Brennan Savage has been like the number one patron for running on two years probably now. Um, that man is a massive supporter, a very huge help uh, for my Facebook group and for just keeping me motivated and wanting to stay organized. Um, he is very patient with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I owe him a shout out. You'll hear his name a few times. Big shout out to Brennan Savage. Um, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you a lot. That being said, uh, thank you guys very much. 
one last time. Shout out where you're from. I see him on there. Crescent City, California. Uh, what we got? What we got? I missed a bunch of them. Texas, uh, Cross, Crossville, Indiana, Dellen, Florida, Visalia, California. Shout out to Visalia, man. Shout out to my folks in Visalia. I haven't been down there in a long time. Uh, shout out to Michael Deering, 33 year old toddler. My man, I love you. Um, all right, yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. Ventura, California. Shout out to Ventura. Utah's in the building. Hell yeah, man. BC Canada's in the building. Love you up in Canada, man. We get a lot of support from Canada. So shout out to Canada. Uh, 504, man. Shout out to the 504. I don't know where the 504 is, but shout out to the 504. Uh, we got 503 here. I'm in the 541. I love it. Shout out to Keystone Heights, Florida. I love that. I, I have been dying to go to Florida. One of my best friends just got back from Florida. One of my other friends moved to Florida. Glassblower, Evol, James, man, I miss him a ton. Uh, Oklahoma, man, Oklahoma in the building. I used to live in Oklahoma. I used to live in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, believe it or not. Uh, 225-303, Need of Orleans. I know what you mean, bro, New Orleans, okay. Shout out to Nola, man. I'm gonna go back to New Orleans soon. And on the, the topic of New Orleans, happy birthday to Cruz. Uh, AKA the baby boss, man, that's Currency's son, Spede Andretti's son, it's his birthday today, he's a year old, shout out to him, 0017th Racing in the building, check this, boy, I know you see that, I know you see that, I'm always representing, with that cowboy bead, with that cowboy bead, right, uh, I love it, man, who else, Denver, but, but I'm from East LA, well, shout out to Denver, Colorado, I work with a bunch of people from Colorado, and shout out to East LA, love it, love it, East LA, man, another Visalia, Char man, I love you guys, all right, I'm gonna get up out of here, I think I read almost all of them, <sighs> Ben Dorgan in the building, doing it big, man, winter's setting in, we're gonna have some snow videos soon, <sighs> peace of chicken grease, you guys, I love all of you, I don't know what else to say, man. I'm just excited to be back. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your evening.